Watch this. There's been a lot of talk about rental fees at the state house this session and removing the caps on what landlords can charge. Well, this week, there's talk centered on renters' rights. An update you've been asking about. Whatever happened with those claims of CRT in Boise County schools made by Representative Dorothy Moon? Well, we heard it was a good community meeting, and you'll hear it too. As Idaho waits for the rest of winter to help build the mountain snowpack, as it stacks up now, will there be enough to help erase or even make a dent in our drought conditions come summer? A main theme so far this legislative session is the housing and rental market across Idaho. There's been a variety of property tax and housing assistance ideas, but one simple concept specifically has generated a lot of debate, rental application fees. Last year, the city of Boise passed a code that capped all rental application fees at $30. Well, new legislation at the state house could undo that, though based on the idea that local governments should not be involved in the business of being a landlord. Idahoans, Boise and beyond are calling on lawmakers to do something, to stop that, to protect them. So a Pocatello lawmaker is presenting a new bill full of rental fee protections. The idea, keep the process fair and prevent predatory rental fee practices. Here's Joe Paris. New legislation is being touted as the most significant renter protections to date in Idaho. The idea behind it? To protect Idahoans who find themselves in an accelerated and competitive rental market. It does move the ball forward in protecting renters. Democrat Representative James Ruckty is sponsoring the legislation. He says the recent explosion in the Idaho rental market helped prompt the legislation. It just opens up the market to some uh, nefarious behavior, some bad behavior from landlords and uh, apartment managers. The bill breaks into a few items. First, if a landlord charges an application fee, they must number one, have a unit available, and two, disclose the criteria that the landlord will review for the background check. Rukti says this is a specific solution to a specific problem lawmakers have heard about. I didn't want to be do a bill that regulated an entire sector of the of the industry. If we could identify a specific problem, then that's what I wanted to focus on. The second set of conditions in the legislation, a landlord may not accept multiple application fees for a rental. The exceptions to that are two cases. One, the application fee is being used as a written backup offer in case the first application being considered falls through. Landlords need to handle one fee at a time. The bill also prevents landlords from doing a background check or spending the money until the first application fee falls through and the unit becomes available. The second scenario, if a owner thinks a unit will soon become available, they can accept an application fee as long as the tenant acknowledges in writing that it's to hold their place for the possible opening. Rukti says the ideas in the bill were created in part through conversations with rental industry professionals who are advocating for fairness and ethical practices. They were the ones who told us that these are the best practices in their industry when it comes to application fees. So that's why we use those best practices. The legislation passed the House committee with a due pass recommendation. It now heads to the full Idaho House. If eventually signed into law, a major question centers on enforcement of the bill. Who would make sure landlords are following the provisions? Rukti says the legislation fits in perfectly with the Idaho Consumer Protection Act. It can be used as a tool in a case under the Idaho Consumer Protection Act. Uh, I'm a trial attorney by trade. What I'll tell you is you could create a jury instruction that could go to the jury that says the following behavior is was against the law at the time these actions were taken, and you would basically take this statute that we're about hopefully about to pass and you would put that in the jury instructions. But All right, Joe, so that original bill that we talked about, the one that removes the caps on rental fees, that's still working its way through the state house. Right. But there was a lot of people who said, hold on, we can't do that. So this is a pretty good example of them like saying, we hear you. Yeah, and, and I think Representative Palmer, who's actually a co-sponsor on this bill, he had said that when he passed the legislation through the House that really got rid of the, you know, the $30 uh, rental application fee specifically in Boise, he said that was about regulations. He said to me in an interview here on the 208 that he was more than happy to get involved with rental protection things to make sure that renters are not being taken advantage of in such a competitive housing market right now. So that is what this looks like, and that's really why you see Representative Rukti, a Democrat, and Representative Palmer, a Republican, 
on the same page here. Um, but with all that said, Brian, lawmakers at the state house know that even if this passes, there's still a lot more work to be done. Representative Ruckty telling me this afternoon, this is again a very specific fix to a very specific problem. Democrats and Republicans know that Idahoans are looking for more relief on property taxes uh, as well as other things as well. So this is one piece in the puzzle again early on, but there is optimism that it will pass. Small piece, you're talking big picture with the property tax and all that kind of stuff. That's a yes. bigger bite. For one sure. piece at a time. Yes. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. I'm not exactly. eating an elephant. <laughs> all okay. right, thanks, Joe. The statement that there is no sex of any kind in any manner, shape, or form with President Clinton was an utterly false statement. Is that correct? It depends upon what the meaning of the word is. Yes. What the meaning of the word is, is. Remember that? Remember back in 1998 when it seemed the whole country was debating the meaning of the word is. Then President Bill Clinton was called before a grand jury to discuss his relationship with a White House intern. He initially denied anything sexual with that sworn statement on semantics, which is how we go from Washington, D.C. in 1998 to Idaho City in 2022. Semantics is how Representative Dorothy Moon chose to explain herself when she claimed last month Critical race theory was being taught to preschoolers in the Boise Basin School District, which is in her legislative district. As you can imagine, school officials and parents had no idea what she was talking about and were rather upset about it. And they planned to ask Representative Moon about those claims in a special meeting that was called on February 10th. Well, so many wanted to address it, they had to cancel that meeting. Not enough space in the meeting room, which led to this text message from Ron. Was there ever a meeting between Moon and the citizens of Idaho City after the first was canceled? Thanks. Well, yes, Ron, there was. A week later, on February 17th, the Boise County Republican women had a scheduled meeting with Representative Moon. So those school leaders and parents, they decided to show up. Because after all, the flyer said, guests welcome. Well, one of those guests recorded the conversation. Just the audio, though. And before we get to that, let's remember what Representative Moon said in a House Education Committee on January 31st. So the Idaho Association of Educating Young Children brought forward a $6 million grant, and you say there is no critical race theory, or doesn't seem to be an issue in Idaho. If um, you were aware, if you were aware in any of the hearings on that program that was defeated by the legislature, um, there, it was laden with critical race theory curriculum for our kids from infancy to pre-K. If, if there was a curricular aspect to it that included critical race theory concepts, that would be news to me. Um, and I'd be concerned about it. Yes, I, I mean, uh, there obviously was. I worked with one of those cohorts down in uh, Boise County, and I did see the curriculum that was being brought in. And, and it, was, um, it was very much CRT. Because if you were to go back and look at the hearing, you would probably see there was a lot of CRT materials that were being provided to these school districts. So it is there. That, that's all. I guess that was more of a statement. More Thank you. Comment. There is a lot of CRT materials being provided to these school districts, so it is there, she said. The emphasis is on the word is because of what Representative Moon said about nine minutes into that meeting last Thursday, which brings us back to Bill Clinton's semantics lesson. So uh, I, and in Boise County, and I did see the curriculum that was, was being brought in. Key word is was, was being brought in had this bill passed and allowed the grant to be approved. That is what I was talking about. And this has just been an absolutely ridiculous, a ridiculous issue that the mainstream media or the press comes out with the story and everybody jumps on it. It sounds like you actually believe that. I mean, it's not just a story that was jumped on. You actually believe that Idaho City was allowing this curriculum CRT. into our, I mean, that I, is not, okay, that is not what I did. It does sound like it. And okay. so but the reason we're here is not because the mainstream media, <laughs> it is because you said it. Well, it was misconstrued. Misconstrued. Well, it seems like everyone heard and saw the same thing. Well, then the Basin School District Superintendent Brian Hunicky, uh, Hunicky, excuse me, spoke up. The same superintendent who told us more than two weeks ago unequivocally critical race theory or social justice ideology in any form is not being taught in Boise County schools. No, Dorothy, you did say to both the Garden Valley superintendent and to the um, Horseshoe Bend that we were teaching CRT. 
You told both of them that. But on the video, you specifically named us up here. I, I so said at Boise DC County DC. School, I always generalize when I'm so talking. Are you willing to go on the, on the record to say that we are not teaching CRT? Because I asked you for, I did contact you twice asking for public, uh, I gave you a public request for uh, evidence and showing that we had CRT. Then there's none there. There's so, none. so you were on the record saying that we are not teaching Sir, CRT. Sir, would you identify yourself? Uh, I'm Brian Medici, the superintendent. So this back and forth went on for a little bit longer. Elementary principal Jamie Pilkerton also speaking up, as well as other parents. And by the time the meeting had reached the 27-minute mark, Representative Moon had must have reached her limit because an aide of hers, apparently, joined the fray to try to put this whole discussion to bed with a concession of sorts. She's answered the question that what she was saying was not that it was being taught here, that the grant they talked about last year that was possible to come here didn't pass the legislator. She's saying that was her job and she did her job. Yeah. And she has said tonight it is not currently in Boise. Yeah. Do you see the misunderstanding of that statement that we all saw when you said CRT is in Boise for the cohort when you said it was here? When you said Boise schools was she was, was she yes. So Except it wasn't what we're told. Elementary school principal again, Jamie Pilgerton pointing out to us about two weeks ago and to Representative Moon just last week that just because there are things like book suggestions from a national organization, that doesn't dictate what is done on a local level. Books are not curriculum, she said, suggested or otherwise. There were no strings attached to this $6 million federal grant, just like there wasn't in 2020 when the Basin School District used those funds for learning packages they sent home to their parents so they could use them with their kids. So school leaders were able to get a small concession from Representative Moon, even if it wasn't the apology they were looking for. But the CRT narrative persists without proof, mostly because of the false flags being waved by the Idaho Freedom Foundation. They bring in uh, uh, different uh, issues that are going on in other parts of the country and say, well, we can't ever let this happen in Idaho. And they go after people that say, well, it's not happening in Idaho. Why are we worried about it? I think that it's very important from my perspective that people understand what's going on. And uh, their tactics are not any different than the far left tactics. That's Senate Majority Leader Chuck Winder on CRT, the IFF, and the impact they've had on Idaho. That leads us into why we are exploring that connection coming up tomorrow in a multi-part series of stories told over two days on KTVB. We're gonna have the first installment tomorrow here on the 208, followed by another on the News at 10. Ah, winter weather, really trying to make a comeback in the waning days of the season. But just how much will we need to have a normal water runoff this spring? And can we get there? Before we get to there, let's get to this. Let's make sure we get your thoughts about the show. Send them to us. Text message 208-321-5614. You can send questions, you can send comments, even complaints, but only if you keep them clean and clever. And if you include your name and the hashtag, the 208, and stick around to the end of the show, we might show yours.
It has been a pretty mellow winter so far, according to hydrologists. Good news, we've seen some snow today, which is desperately needed, yes. But hydrologists say we haven't seen a substantial amount of snowfall since January 8th, which would be a significant dry spell, something we became familiar with last year. And the unfortunate trend of this is continuing. But a two drought years in a row typically doesn't have a, well, a positive impact, meaning water shortages could be coming to a region near you and soon. Here's Katya Stepovic. January, we thought was going to be a really good water year. Snowpack was well above normal or normal across all of southwest Idaho. But this long extended dry period is really uh, taking its toll on those expectations. Troy Lindquist, service hydrologist for the National Weather Service in Boise, says the water year, which started October 1st, was off to a good start. But after the beginning of January, the snowpack level took a turn for the worst. Last year, it early spring, we thought we were in pretty good shape and we had some record dryness followed by record summer heat last year. That really, uh, you know, intensified drought across the region. And then uh, things uh, started um, improving uh, last fall and early this winter, but now we're kind of swinging back towards uh, you know, increasing drought across the region. David Hokema is a hydrologist with the Idaho Department of Water Resources. As he looks at the snowpack measurement from this year, he worries that this drought year could set a record. We're much lower than we were last year. That year came off pretty rough. I mean, we're right in line with 1992, which was one of the worst drought years in the state. Hokuma says we still have time and a chance to accumulate more snowpack, which could potentially mean more water for our reservoirs. But it's crucial that this March is a moist one, because if not... After that, the only route to really see drought recover uh, drought recovery would be to have a really wet spring and an unusually cool summer, which that's probably not likely. So what's at stake? Possibly uh, more wildfires if we have very hot and dry conditions. Um, people are going to have to think about potential water shortages for irrigators and water users across uh, southern Idaho and just make plans for that. Yeah, and I want to show our viewers a look at Idaho's current drought conditions. Take a look at our monitor right here. You can see it's not very daunting to look at as a whole, but southern Idaho is in that kind of darker orange color. That is severe drought, and then we go a little bit north. We see some moderate drought, abnormally dry, and then we go back into that severe drought, even this part of Idaho um, bordering Oregon in extreme drought. And the worry is we have um, highest peak of snowpack April 1st. So we only really have a month to get there. And if this March doesn't bring a lot of rain and or snow, we could be seeing a whole lot more red on this monitor. It, it is amazing. I was marveling at what he said in that in that story that you brought uh, Katya, because yes, we still have a little bit of time left, but to be in a situation where we already are worse than last year when some places were shutting irrigation off in June is crazy. Yeah, and we had that water carryover from two years ago to get us through last year, but now we're starting with virtually nothing or very little, so it's even worse in a second drought year in a row. That's too bad. All right, thank you very much, Katya. And the way our political world is looking more and more and more every day, we need to make sure that our citizens are protected beyond any shadow of a doubt so that if they do indeed take human life, they're, they're protected from that. That is outgoing Senator Christy Zitto of Hammett. She's leaving to take a job with the Second Amendment Alliance. Second Amendment. Fittingly, as one of her last acts, Zitto introduced a bill that would strengthen Idaho's Stand Your Ground law. That's a law that says you have the right to protect yourself and your family in your own home, place of employment, and vehicle by any means necessary when eminent danger is present. This morning, Senator Zitto introduced an update to this bill in part inspired by what happened back in the summer of 2020. 16 year old Kyle Rittenhouse was charged with two counts of murder after shooting and killing or shooting two men during a protest in Kenosha, Wisconsin. He claimed he was acting in self-defense and late last year he was acquitted on those charges. After seeing that all unfold, Senator Zitto hoping to add a section to Idaho code that reimburses those who are acquitted on charges based on the stand your ground law. This might well rank as one of the most important self-defense laws that we could look at and pass at this current time. In the past couple of years, we've witnessed nationwide some events that should be very frightening to all of us, all of us who believe in the Constitution and especially our Second Amendment right. And we might stand here and we might think, well, this only happens outside of Idaho, but I can guarantee you that it happens in Idaho and it has happened. 
It unanimously went through committee. Everybody said, let's go with it. They printed the bill. It's now going to be sent to committee for a public hearing. Probably heard this already today, but today has a lot of cool attachments to it. It's Taco Tuesday, it's California Day, it's National Margarita Day, and it's National Walk Your Dog Day. Oh, don't forget, it's also National Spay Day. So maybe celebrate by taking your female French Bulldog, which is the number one breed in California, by the way, for a walk to the vet. And when your vet asks why you're here, since your dog is already spayed, you can explain you've had maybe a few too many margaritas, which would also explain why you're wearing the tutu. But today's another day of note, you probably know. Yes, it is February 22nd of the year 2022. The straight twos on a Tuesday nonetheless. I mean, what are the odds of this happening? So if you write out the date out full, not like we do in America, but like they do in the rest of the world, with the date first, then the month, then the year, it looks, it looks like this, 22, 02, 2022. A perfect palindrome. The last time we were able to see this exact phenomenon, 1,011 years ago, on November 1st of the year 1011. And at 222 this morning, maybe this afternoon, depending on how you set your clocks, we hit a moment in the Gregorian calendar, well, that will only happen twice. 222 on 222 22. The next time could be tonight, though, I guess, if you're working on a 24 hour clock at 1022 p.m. or 2222 on 22222. There will be another similar palindrome dates, or other of those, I should say, going forward. The next time will be at 2.22 a.m. on February 22nd of the year 2222. That date falls on a Friday, 
by the way. So consider yourself lucky to see a day like this where the date and the time line up to be in a perfect palindrome on a Tuesday. However, you might remember there were two other palindrome dates this month, one of those happening two days ago. All right, several comments sent in on uh, Representative Dorothy Moon and her meeting that she had last week uh, with uh, Idaho City residents and the claim that CRT, critical race theory, is being taught in the Basin School District, like Sandy, who says, I believe that Representative Moon did not expect to have to provide any evidence to back up her claim, was a little overwhelmed by having to answer educators who actually knew the truth. And this one from Lori, oh my gosh, Representative Moon and Idaho's GOP legislators are clearly bowing to conspiracy theories raging across this nation. Any form of COT is CRT is only taught at college level law classes, and that is the truth. Words have meaning. Say what you mean, mean what you say, and in saying so, exclude all of the meanings. Moon is lying about her words being misconstrued, says Nancy in McCall. Is this me or do far right wingers and far left wingers seem almost identical in methodology? Too bad for that. Stop doing stories on the legislature. It makes me want to drink excessively, says Kathy in Boise. Well, it is Margarita Day, but take your time. <laughs> 